let's talk retirement. It's time to enjoy all those bucket list items that you didn't get to do while you were working. You saved in your company retirement plan, have some additional income streams, like maybe social security or a pension or annuity or some rental income. But now that your paycheck will soon be turned off, how exactly should you withdraw assets to use during retirement? Well, this is a complex question and every situation is different, but if you stick with me, I'll explain the optimal strategies for generating retirement income and what not to do. Stick around. It's Colin Exelby here, and I provide financial planning for business owners and their families that makes sense by helping you see the forest through the trees. I'm the owner of a virtual financial advisory practice, Celestial Wealth Management, and provide advice to families all over the country. Part of that advice is retirement income planning. How do you turn these assets you accumulated into the most efficient retirement income stream possible? Numerous studies have shown that with a little thought, preparation, and analysis, you can extend the life of your portfolio, increase your distribution rate, or pass on more wealth to your heirs. I'm going to talk about withdrawals from three types of accounts, taxable accounts, tax deferred accounts, and tax free accounts. Now taxable are non-retirement accounts where you've already been taxed and your only taxes would be capital gains when liquidating assets. Tax deferred are retirement accounts where you received a tax deduction upfront and you will owe income taxes when you distribute those assets. These accounts are typically traditional or rollover IRAs, SEP or simple IRAs, 401ks, or 403bs. All right, tax-free assets are assets where there aren't capital gains or income taxes when you distribute them. These are typically a Roth 401k or a Roth IRA account where contributions were initially taxed but growth and distributions are not taxed when you withdraw them as long as the account is open for at least five years and some simple age restrictions are met. Okay, the first step to figuring out how to distribute assets is to figure out how much you need annually to live on after taking into account any other income sources. So what do you do? First, Figure out your total retirement need, after taxes of course, and then subtract any after-tax income flows that you have, like social security, pensions, rental income, and annuity payments. The remainder is the amount that's needed for retirement withdrawals. Typically, once you retire, distributions are made from a combination of those three types of accounts. The goal of retirement income planning is to maximize after-tax distributions. You want to be mindful of your tax brackets throughout retirement and both at the federal and the state level. Currently, there are 12 states who do not tax distributions from retirement accounts or pensions. If you are considering a move in retirement, a state without retirement income taxes could be a major help to your portfolio. Nine states don't currently levy any state taxes, and another three don't tax retirement distributions. Alabama taxes 401ks and IRAs, but doesn't tax pensions. For a list of states that don't tax retirement income, just check out the notes below. All right, to analyze your federal and state income tax rates, the first step is to project your income levels and then use software to project your tax rates, taking into account tax credits and deductions. Ideally, you wanna be very mindful of the points where the tax brackets jump up. 
There are certain income levels where the marginal tax rate increases, meaning your retirement income is taxed at different rates depending upon how much total income you have. All right, let's take a look at five strategies for withdrawing assets and who might typically use them. For each of these strategies, it's important to know the age limitations and withdrawals and whether penalties apply to you. In most cases, paying penalties for early withdrawals is the worst strategy. The government created these plans and gave incentives for you to save for retirement. Don't blow up these benefits in early withdrawal penalties if you need distributions prior to the appropriate age. There are additional strategies that may limit the impact of those penalties. Let's dive in. The first strategy is what I will call the baseline income strategy. It typically is the least tax efficient, but often it's the easiest one to employ. It's called pro rata and means that you equally distribute assets from your taxable, your tax deferred, and your tax free accounts. For example, let's say you need $6,000 per month to live on after your other income sources have been used. The pro rata strategy would be to take $2,000 each from your taxable account, your tax deferred account, and your tax free account. If your investment strategy is to hold the exact same asset allocation in each type of account, then as you withdraw assets, your asset allocation stays consistent over time. The assumption is that by withdrawing equally from each type of account, you diversify your tax burden over time. This strategy is ideal for someone who would not change marginal tax brackets based on distributions. On the surface, this isn't a bad strategy if you don't know what to do, don't wish to do deeper analysis, or don't really have a desire to pass along assets. Strategy number two. I'm going to call this the taxable pro rata. This means distributions are funded with the taxable account first until it is completely depleted. Then distributions are funded equally by the tax deferred and the tax free accounts. This strategy typically keeps tax rates lower in the early years because the only taxes you're paying are on capital gains from the investments, not any principal distributions from the retirement accounts. This also allows the tax deferred and the tax free accounts to grow without taxes for a longer period of time. This strategy could be ideally employed by someone with a larger taxable account and smaller retirement accounts. The downside with this strategy is that you may be exchanging lower tax rates now for future taxes at much higher rates depending upon how large the distributions are and what the heck future tax rates are. All right, strategy number three is to use tax deferred accounts first, followed by the taxable and then finally tax free. This strategy aims to keep the tax free assets growing as long as possible and more evenly spread the tax obligation over time. Typically, in the early years of retirement, or if you retire early, your income levels are much lower than while you were working. Using tax deferred assets first capitalizes on the fact that while your income is lower, usually before mandatory retirement distributions take effect, and potentially before receiving Social Security, you can distribute assets that will be taxable and still stay in a lower marginal tax bracket. This strategy could be ideal for someone who retires early with a large amount in tax deferred retirement assets like in the IRA or 401k and having smaller amounts in taxable and tax free accounts, especially if those assets are invested in higher growth areas. It allows those assets to grow for a longer period of time before liquidation, and then liquidation could be at lower tax rates. Strategy number four is to distribute taxable assets first, then tax-free assets, 
And finally, tax deferred assets. This strategy is designed to defer the largest amount of tax for as long as possible. And this strategy would be ideal for someone who either has a shorter life expectancy, maybe due to some medical condition or some family issues, or someone with a larger tax-free and taxable account. By distributing taxable assets first, of course you only pay capital gains taxes, and you defer the larger income taxes from tax deferred distributions so far into the future that you may not even be distributing them at all before passing away. The fifth strategy is to use taxable assets first, then tax deferred, and finally tax free. Now by default, this is the most often used retirement income strategy, and intuitively it makes sense, especially if your asset allocation is aligned, meaning your investments across the different accounts are aligned. First, allow your tax-free Roth assets to grow as long as possible. You'll want to distribute all your taxable assets first where only capital gains taxes are paid. You next would withdraw all your tax deferred assets. This is when you would most likely be in your highest marginal income bracket in retirement. And finally, when all of those other assets are gone, then you distribute your tax-free Roth assets. This strategy would be ideal for someone with larger taxable assets who desires to pass on assets to their heirs because tax-free Roth assets are often the most desirable assets to pass on because of their tax-free nature. The problem with this strategy is that in your early retirement years, when your income is often the lowest, you're not taking advantage of those low marginal tax rates. You often end up in much higher tax brackets than needed in the years when you're distributing your tax-deferred assets. So what's the ideal strategy? In my opinion, the ideal strategy is to be fluid, not rigid. Look, tax rates change. Your distribution needs change. We all make assumptions, but we don't know what's gonna happen in the future. And market conditions change. I'm a big believer that maintaining flexibility makes a lot of sense. In my experience, retirees often spend the most in the early years of retirement. You do all those things that you wanted to do and you didn't have the time. And you pay a lot of expenses in the later years when healthcare costs are significant, both in the home and if you need additional care. The years in the middle are often when you have lower spending needs. Because retirement spending isn't often a straight line, your withdrawal strategy should reflect those changing needs. I firmly believe that based on much analysis, that attempting to maintain a consistent income tax rate throughout retirement, rather than lower and then higher later on, makes a lot of sense. The most tax deferred assets that you can distribute in the early years of retirement at lower tax rates, the better. Even if you don't need the assets right away, they could potentially be reinvested in tax-free Roth accounts through a conversion or in a taxable account where only the capital gains taxes would be due, or maybe some combination of both. This is a strategy that many people miss out on. I see it all the time. They miss out due to the desire to delay taxes as long as possible. And this creates potential tax bombs in retirement accounts. And if tax rates increase in your retirement, you could be in for a rude awakening. These are the most common distribution strategies, but they're not the only ones. Every family situation and their needs are different, and this should not be construed as specific advice. Thankfully, nowadays powerful financial planning software exists to examine each of these strategies as it relates to your own situation and determine the best course of action. Currently in my practice, I use some incredible software from Wright Capital that helps me analyze this with my clients. 
If you're getting close to retirement and wish to analyze your withdrawal strategies, feel free to reach out to me at my website, celestialwm.com, or speak with your trusted advisor. If you enjoyed this video, just hit that little like button and make sure you smash that subscribe button so you're notified whenever I produce a new financial planning video. And YouTube loves engagement, so you really help the channel. If you have any comments and questions you'd like to add, please do so in the comments below.